Tun Tun, you're my ad dog, aren't you? That's right. Folks, you know, sometimes during these podcasties, I like to plug podcasts that I enjoy personally. And I listen to on a regular basis, and uh, usually it ties in thematically with our episode. And uh, this one's no different. <laughs> Look at my face. Uh, what's that, Tun Tun? You want to tell everybody about the Cryptid Keeper podcast? Me too. Join your hosts, Alex and Addison, as they talk about cryptids. Cute little fuzzy boys, and sometimes not so cute little fuzzy boys. This past week, as of this recording, I believe they were talking about the Gray Man, who foretolds hurricanes. What's that, Tantan? You love their witty banner. I do too. And let me tell you, you're going to like it too. So check out the Cryptid Keeper podcast. Anywhere podcasts are found and categorized as living creatures. Anyway, hope you enjoy this episode. Our episode. And also their episodes. This is off the rails. Say bye, Tun Tun. Good dog. Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Die, the His vs. Hers Guide to the Apocalypse, the podcast. It's your boy Brett, keeping it way 100 over in here. If you leave your porch light on at night, you might attract a wild moth, Wes. Wes, say hi. Hello. We're also joined this time by my weirdo sister, Jasmine. Jasmine, say hey. Hello, everybody. Hey, we're... We're back for a regular episode. I know everyone's waiting with bated breath. Uh, Mom, I appreciate you listening to all the episodes during your road trip. So, hi, Mom. Everybody say hi to Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Yep. Uh, Appreciate it if you would uh, leave a review in there, Mom. You know, you know, a nice review, you know, for your boy. Be real nice. Anywho, Wes, what's new with you this week? Work. Like always. I hear you. Jazz, what's up and with you? Waiting, and, wait, and waiting for the Fallout 4 beta, or Fallout 76 beta. Fallout, Fallout, Fallout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Stay tuned for that episode. Jazz, what have you been up to? Um, work as well. Did you just and... catch something recently? Oh, yeah. Uh, I just caught you too. Since he's now available in raids. And who did you catch him without? Um, I don't know. Rude. <laughs> Very... other opportunities. I've been up to a bunch of nothing. Running around with my head cut off, cutting grass, working, and cleaning the house. Still recovering from Dragon Con. My house was a mess for a very long time. Anyway, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Mothman. Oh, real quick, before we move on, Jasmine is currently working right now, so she might have to duck out at any given moment. Wes is determined that football is more important in his life than his own uh, listenership, so he might duck out here for football. So, yo, we gotta do what we gotta do. We gotta get an episode out. We gotta, you know, make Ma happy. So, hey... Mothman is a cryptid, best known from Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which is where all three of us are from. Uh, I've been to Point Pleasant a bunch of times, me and Wes. Wes, were you with, you? it was with me and you, like we would explore Lake and Mental Hos- Hospital up there, right? I've been to Point Pleasant. Yeah. I don't remember which ones I did, but I didn't do all of them, I know that. Right, yeah. So lots of good times. Um, Mothman, again, is a cryptid. Giant winged bipedal creature. Um, at first, he For was. For those of you who don't know, Mothman has an 8 to 15 foot wingspan. And he's 6 to 8 feet tall. Oh. Just so you guys know. For they... the listeners who don't know, he's also Just got these really bloodthirsty eyes that seem to just stare into your soul. That's what people say. Huh. Well. Welcome to Let's Die, Jasmine's podcast, who's uh, taken over hosting duties. Uh, but yeah, she's right. Um, 
Jasmine, how tall do you think he stands? Like from uh, foot to head. I'm hoping he's super tall. He, That'd be me. He is very he's super tall. tall. With foot wings. Yeah, he's got to be huge. Well, he, probably eat me. He is definitely huge. Um, if I if memory <laughs> serves, and I don't have it in front of me because I'm a bad host, apparently. Um, he's like seven feet tall, like over, maybe over seven feet tall, red eyes, like, uh, Jasmine described, glowing red eyes that, that are kind of like car headlights, um, he is a big deal in West Virginia, he's our cryptid, he belongs to us, uh, all these people Nobody up else. in New York that just started sh seeing him again, shut the hell up, um, he started appearing uh, mainly in the TNT area, which is a former World War II mun munitions plant. It's basically just an abandoned site. It's kind of really overgrown. It's where they stored a lot of TNT. A lot of kids go up there and drink, or at least used to. Um, but then people started seeing him, and he started chasing them around, including like uh, high-speed chases in people's cars and stuff. Um, getting to that a little bit later. Uh, he hasn't been seen, at least not... No really substantial sightings since the Silver Bridge collapse. The Silver Bridge collapsed, Wes. Help me out. When did that happen? Give me a round of answers. I do not have a clue. I don't know. It was remember. in the 80s, wasn't it? In the 80s? No, I believe it was a lot sooner or a lot earlier than that. Uh, Jasmine, fill some time here. Talk about something while I look it up. Okay. Um, the Mothman. They did say that there was a sighting for that bridge, but some say that the Mothman was there to warn them of the disaster. And uh, allegedly, he has been seen in places like Japan and other parts of the world trying to warn them of disasters that may come their way. What do you think about that, Wes? Ooh. I think he's trying to steal Spider-Man's job. Damn, <laughs> She is good at this. This should just be her podcast. Wes, me and you need to retire. <laughs> well, we're lazy bombs. I mean, she <laughs> went right into the segue, too. What do you think of that, Wes? Like, she set you up. That was good. And then you had the tagline there, the little, little comedy joke, pun pun. Woo! I, I dig it. Pretty good. Anywho. That what do you this, think? This, hold on. The Silver Bridge collapsed in, on December 15th, 1967. That's an unfortunate date because that's our mama's birthday. Mom, happy birthday if you're listening on December 15th. Don't think of that about that. Uh, let's see. How many people did, 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 died? I know it's something like 40-ish. Jasmine, go ahead. I'm looking it, I'm looking it up. I'm ill-prepared today. Um, let's see. So some people were saying that they saw him in Japan. And they're thinking they're that he was there to warn them of a giant um, power plant exploding. I don't remember where it was, but I don't know if he would be, like, why would the Mothman be in Japan warning somebody of an event like that? Well, I'm wondering, oh, oh. do you guys think that he would be there to help? Or do you think that he is the cause? Or just to witness the destruction? Well, if uh, there was an old book called The Mothman Prophecies, um, and a lot of that was in there. There was a thing about Japan and all that in that movie. If, if memory serves, the head, the eyes looking like headlights, things like that, Richard Gere, all that stuff um, kind of ties in that. And Mothman, by and large, has been associated. At, at least at first, he was a big, he was a cryptid guy, uh, part of like the supernatural lexicon, if you will. Uh, but then, as more sightings occurred and weird stuff started to happen, he also kind of bled. He's unique in, as far as cryptids go because he kind of bled into uh, alien UFO sort of dealios. So, like, you started to get. MIB sightings, like strange men in black suits just appearing around Point Pleasant and just being overall shady. You also have uh, the Grinning Man, which is arguably maybe not a human being at all. It's just this guy in a black suit and 
I believe sometimes a bowler's cap with just this huge, just unnatural grin, and he would just stare at people real creepily or um, unsubstantiated stories where that he would like occasionally beat some, beat a fool down. You know, maybe he needed to get that money. I don't know, but um, yeah, like, like Mothman has a real unique kind of space in the cryptid slash supernatural slash alien sort of deal. Um, the Silver Bridge collapse killed 46 people, by the way. Two of the bodies of which were never found, which, Wes, I know you've heard this before, but there's always those rumors of, um, there's just a little aside, a little aside, the catfish that, uh, like, divers would go down to get the bodies, and then they would come back up and refuse to go back down because they were catfish the size of, like, small cars, like, just chomping on the bodies. What's that? Like, the size of, like, VW bus cars. I've heard that, too. I've heard that exact same uh, comparison. And then there's all kinds of, there's, like, there's all kinds of, like, news stories that were in the news articles of fishermen in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, pictures of, like, catfishes that are the size of cars. Yeah. Jasmine, what were you about to say? Uh, 1967 was the year that the bridge uh, collapsed. I just said that. And it was rumored that the rumor of Mothman was in 1966. So a year before that was when everything kind of happened. Injured cold. Um, he would kind of like hypnotize people. Like someone would look out their window of their house and they would see the giant guy standing there with his wingy wings, with his eyes and almost like hypnotic, like put people in kind of a trance. And then he would just take off vertically. And these are people that are reputable. They're not people that would just kind of make this stuff up for attention. We West Virginians, we're not exactly, uh, glitzy and glamorous, like from the city. Like we're talking country folk, like who don't want that kind of spotlight on them. Um, people, and, and also, by the way, flying straight up is really, really difficult. Like, vertical takeoff, I don't think there's a single bird that can do that other than the hummingbird. And I doubt there's a 10-foot hummingbird hanging around Point Pleasant. So, if they saw something fly straight, like a humanoid fly straight up, then that's a pretty big red flag that there's something really weird going on. Um, I mean, they're saying that Mothman was created by, you know, contaminated materials and toxic waste, and that it came from a bird, I, somehow evolved into Mothman. No, Moth hang Man. on, no, no. Like, toxic waste has never created, like, they might create mutants per se, but it's not going to create, like, something like a Mothman. Like, if it, it doesn't... You know, Chernobyl hasn't even created, like, like it, it's created, like, m genetic deformities and stuff like that, and it definitely has hindered a lot of natural life that's been overtaking the area over there. But, like, you know, the catfish over there, their, their growth is stunted as a result of the radiation, but they're not, like, three-headed catfish. So the idea that a bird would evolve into, a, like, a bipedal man creature that's ten foot tall with red glowing eyes is just, it's not... Often. Hey, here's something. I said New York. Screw you, New York. I rescind that. I take it back. New York, you're cool. Leave us a review. Uh, Chicago, screw you. You're the ones that are saying that you just you started seeing the Mothman here recently. So, something is probably either going to very bad happen. Whoa, that's some really bad grammar. Something is very going to bad happen in Chicago. Uh, or, you're straight up liars. Hey, Take us home, Country Roads. This is West Virginia we're talking about now. This is our home turf. You guys got all kinds of stuff. Can you not let us have this one thing, please? Damn it. Anywho, Wes, what's up? What's up? What's up, man? I uh, I hope it stays a myth. Stays a myth? Nah, man, we gotta get him. I'm gonna give him a high five. Anyway, Mothman, you know, since, uh, you know, the sightings died down after the Silver Bridge collapse, you got a lot of, uh, brr, 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 you know, little, like, fanfare around him. Like, he's, he made Point Pleasant famous, basically. Um, 
along with the the bridge collapse, which is kind of not famous. It's more like I don't know, is that no notoriety? I don't know. Anyway, they do a festival in in Point Pleasant every year. It's great. People should go to it if they get the chance. Uh, you know, food trucks. They got Mothy Manny stuff. The the museum, all kinds of things. There's a 5K. Wes, this was your first year going to the Mothman Festival. What'd you think about it? I thought it was fun. Yeah, it's fun, right? It's pretty chill. Like, it's a festival, but it's chill. Like, it's walk around, check out some cool, weird stuff, say what's up to people. I've got Eat a couple a Mothman of times. pizza. What's that, Jazz? Eat a Mothman pizza. Mothman pizza? They got Mothman yeah, everything. Wes, what was that one? Oh, it was uh, Mothballs. They had Mothballs. I believe it was an ice cream. I don't remember what food truck that is, but... And hey, if you found one of our Let's Die business cards up there and you're listening now what's up hmm so anyway guys are we drinking anything tonight nope nope that h2o you guys don't yeah. know how this show works i am currently drinking lagunitas little 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 something little something something ale brewed and bottled by the lagunitas brewing company in chicago what Ah, ah, ah. ah Chicago! Good lord. Supporting Chicago. Yeah. Well, back to Mothy Man. Yeah. Jasmine, Anyways. have you seen the Mothman prophecies? Uh, I have seen a lot of videos mm -hmm. on Mothman. Okay. Did you know that Mothman's pretty famous? Uh, even uh, BuzzFeed. Uh, I don't know if you know what BuzzFeed is, but I'm sure if you're a 20-something-year-old or a teenager, you probably know what BuzzFeed is. You know what BuzzFeed is? Nope. Yes, BuzzFeed is a YouTube channel and company that is really popular nowadays. Um, hit show that they have on their YouTube channel. They came down to Point Pleasant to investigate whether or not Mothman was a myth. Interesting. It is interesting. But stupid. Uh, I mean, publicity is publicity. I, I feel like all those shows are kind of junk, really, honestly. Like, we're not talking about, like, a ghost that they have all this weird, dumb equipment to, to try and pick up readings on. It's not like an alien, not, not a strictly alien thing where you can find crop circles or spots where the, it landed and with the dead vegetation and all that. It, it walks the line of both supernatural and extraterrestrial. And as such, it defies classification almost. Like, it's not simply a cryptid because there seems to be a kind of underlying intelligence to it. Intelligence to it. Um, unlike, unlike Wes. Um, yep. Yep. Burn. Burn, baby! Uh, Wes, I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. We don't welcome us again. We went to the same high school. <laughs> oh, wait, we all three went to the same high school. Now that I think about it. Yes, we did. Red Dragons, what's uh, up? Though I'm substantially younger than you. Ten years. Oh, right? yeah. No, you're not. You're only oh. eight years younger than me. How dare you? How dare you put me on blast <laughs> like that? <laughs> Uh, so Jasmine, since you actually did some prep for this, uh, what, what else can you tell us that we haven't covered so far? Well, we covered the appearance. Uh -huh. We covered some interesting events that may or may not be true. Hmm, trying to think. What about the books or the movie about the Mothman? Have you seen any of those? I asked you that question, and yes, I actually have seen The Mothman Prophecies, and yes, I do own it, and yes, it is on a D in a DVD on a shelf over there in my living room, so thank you very much. Richard Gere, by the way, has sex with his uh, wife in the closet of a house they're about to buy. I don't know why that's relevant. I just remember that. He was also called Indrid Cold in that movie. Let's Real quick, let's reenact the famous scene from that movie, which is also on display, actually on display in the, uh, the Mothman Museum, if you get a lovely chance to go get it. So, you've guys seen it, right? 
Jasmine Reese said no. You kind of no. walked away around the question there. Yeah. Wes, yeah, have you seen yeah, it? No, I have not seen it. It's been a long time, so I don't really remember it. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, this will be more fun doing it with Jasmine. So, Jasmine, <laughs> you're gonna play the okay. part. You're gonna play the part of Richard Gear. Richard Gear. Because I know Gere. who that is. He's the main character, and he's also a famous movie star. Keep up, honey. Um, because well, I'm the most important person on this podcast. No, Ooh. because it'll be easier for you because you haven't seen it. Ooh. Um, so basically, you're going to receive a mysterious phone call from your rotary corded telephone in your hotel room. Okay? Okay. Okay. Bring, 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 bring. Bring, 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 bring. Bring, 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 bring. Hello? Who's there? Hello? Excuse me? Are you threatening my family? Hello? Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> my my what? What'd you say? Is, yeah, I'll speak up. Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> Willis? I know what's in your pocket. Oh, really? What's in my pocket? <laughs> and then you drop the phone and run away. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Mothman Prophecies based on pure memory, having not seen it in... 10 years? Oh, what a joy. Wes, what'd you think of that? He thought my acting was spectacular. That's what he thought. I know I did. Real quick, let's go over some uh, sightings, How, shall we? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first Mothman sighting was on November 12th, 1966. Actually, not in Point Pleasant. It was in Clendenin, West Virginia, not too far away from us. Um, five grave diggers claimed to see a human-like figure soaring just above them in the autumn trees. Days later, on November 15th, in Point Pleasant, a small city, which is a small city located in the meeting place, blah, 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 blah. Um, two couples both spotted a white-winged, human-sized creature with fiery eyes standing in front of their car headlights. It was like a man with wings, they recounted to the uh, newspaper. It wasn't like anything you'd seen on TV or in a monster movie. Another witness, whose name I won't mention, described the creature as having red eyes about two inches in diameter and six inches apart. Scarberry said that he had seen the creature by himself. Whoops, I just named him. He wouldn't have said anything, but there were four of us who saw it. The sightings continued for months throughout the Point Pleasant area. The mystery and fear surrounding the strange bird-like monster came to a head on December 15th, 1967, with the tragic collapse of Silver Bridge, where 46 people died. So, and then, of course, we went over to the theories and stuff. Real quick, I want to bring up the bird thing. Like, uh, people saying, oh, you're just, you know, you saw a big owl. That's some horse shit. There are no owls that are fucking 10, 7 to 10 feet tall, for the record. Okay? There are no owls that eyeballs glow red. There are no owls that will sever your dogs and cats in half and drain them of blood, which, by the way, is an extraterrestrial... Uh, gimmick that seems to happen a lot with like alien uh, creature abductions and whatnot. So there's another thing for that. Also, I want to point out when people say that Mothman is like a big, big owl, that um, people have also reported greys, like the alien. Jasmine West, do you all know what greys are? Yes, I know what greys are. Greys are more tiny. Yeah. Right, they're like small men. Um, like, you know, Alien Men, the classic greys, with the oblong and gee heads, with the big black eyes. And they're they're almost 100% um, thought of as being psych psychic or telekinetic in some fashion. And there are actually a lot of stories. Uh, you know, you, you listener, dear listener, use your own Googles. Find your own fucking sources. There are a lot of stories. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of stories of the greys 
disguising themselves as owls, but the owls will be huge because the greys are like four, three to four foot tall, something like that. So those are that's really big for an owl. And the closest thing, like if you were if you looked like a gray and you wanted to disguise yourself as just a creature in the environment, an owl makes a pretty good fit with what with, with the eyes and the head and all that stuff. Um, but people will say, you know, certain people are stronger um, mentally in that regard as far as like psychic stuff goes. So maybe they'll see the, the grays as the grays, and then when the grays notice that they've been noticed, they act surprised and then they become owls. Or vice versa, um, someone will see a giant massive freaking owl, and then that illusion will kind of fade a little bit. And they'll kind of get a glimpse of a gray. So, I don't know if it's connected with the Mothman Man at all, but it's it's just it's all things that that warrant mentioning. I feel like. Well, I'm actually surprised that you haven't brought up the fact that when Mothman magically appeared, there was a very popular comic that was out there. Do you want? Do you have anything to say about that? Um, comic books are printed on paper and ink, with ink, and they exist. Jasmine, what do you want me to say about a comic book? In around the 1950s, 1960s, the Batman comic featured a character called Mothman. Uh uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. And the news got a hold of the figure that Scarberry and the other couple saw... Mm -hmm. And that's where they got the name Mothman. So, he may not be an actual Mothman. The creature could just be named Mothman because of the figure that somebody saw. So, his name is called Mothman because that was a very popular comic book back then. Huh. Well, that that actually is a pretty interesting point that you bring up, Jasmine. I'm glad so, you're here. So, the question is, was it someone just dressing up like the Mothman? I would counter Mothman? that someone dressing up could not take flight. Well, I mean, I heard from a story that the couple was in the woods, maybe or maybe not under the influence so by the time they had went to report what they saw, they could have, you know, been seeing things that may or may not have been there. No, oh. I appreciate your input. That's my response. Wes, okay, you... well then how about this? <laughs> Do you believe that the Mothman exists? I believe that the truth is out there, Jasmine. I don't think... I think whatever Mothman was, or is, um, it's, people, there was too many sightings, and too much weird stuff going on, to deny that something strange was happening. Ergo, something out of the ordinary, ergo, it wasn't an owl, I don't necessarily believe that it was something supernatural, and I don't necessarily believe that it was something extraterrestrial. I will concede that it was... Something strange out of the ordinary that we just do not know, and we probably will never will never have concrete uh, knowledge of what it actually was. I will do that. Wes, what do you think? Do you think he's real? I think the sightings are real, but do I think it's real though? You think they're just people under like a mass delusion, or or just a lot of misidentifications? Delusion, but perpetrated. You think they're it's hoaxes, fake. maybe? Yes. I'm sure. I'm sure some of the sightings can be attributed to hoaxes. That's not impossible. I'm sure some of the things. And, and there's one thing that we're not put taking into account is that is the possibility. That it's multiple things happening. We all assume that Mothman is just one thing and that's it. It could very well be that the animal mutilations and some of the things in the sky and things like and the, and whatever it was taking off vertically is extraterrestrial. 
And at the same time, around the same time, in the same areas, we're also seeing a spike in supernatural activity, what with all this kind of weird psycho telekinesis? No, telepsychicism. That's it. Um, <laughs> you're welcome for that. Put it on a t-shirt. Uh, you know, maybe it's a mix of, of a bunch of different really weird things that we have no explanation for that are all coming together at the same time in the same generalized area, and it's all being lumped in as one thing when it's actually multiple things. And I feel like people don't actually even think of that, because honestly, I didn't even think about it till just now, that it could have be multiple things. What if... You know, aliens like to abduct people and animals all the time. Maybe the aliens were going after a cryptid. Maybe they were experimenting on a Bigfoot, because Bigfoot, is he not seven foot plus tall? Help? I don't, I don't know. Oh my God, God. I'm good for eight. Look, Sasquatch is over seven foot tall, full grown, guaranteed. And say, for instance, some alien buggers got, got a hold of him, and there are actual people who, you know, abductees that claim to remember being operated on in some fashion, which is personally horrifying by aliens. What if Bigfoot was abducted and they sewed a bunch of weird wings on him and experimented with him? And uh, yeah, they're like, hey, buddy, we're done with you. Go back there and freak some people out. Maybe they well, did. What if it wasn't aliens doing it, but our government? Or something of what, what would our government have to gain from catching Bigfoot and sewing wings on him? First of all, they caught Bigfoot. I don't know about it. I would say, what if it's all illusions? All of it is illusions, because there's a little variation within when, within a lot of the stories. There's a little bit of variation, and obviously so that that's attributed to eyewitness accounts and the d difference between people and the way they see things. I get it. What if it was extraterrestrial... And what they were, and extraterrestrial, unseen extraterrestrials were projecting illusions to people to gauge things like fear response. And then they would change it a little bit here and there to see how different people would react. Hmm. I don't know. You might just be thinking too much about it. Or maybe I'm thinking just enough about it, Jasmine. I feel like uh, Will Smith is going to knock on my door any moment and flash me with one of those flasher memory erasers. Will Smith will save us all. Okay, anyway, we're starting to run a little long here. Um, real quick, survival tips. Wes, you're a mountain man from West Virginia. Give us some survival tips on how you would survive an encounter with the Mothman. Now, I would probably look for the sturdiest house, preferably concrete. <laughs> I would turn on a porch light myself, because if he's a mothman, he'll just flutter around it. Yeah. Jasmine? Um, I'd probably just uh, die. Probably. <laughs> hey, that's the name uh, of this podcast. I'm going to heart attack I might have. But. It seems like not... At least I can't remember any sightings where anyone actually tried to attack mothman. Um, actually... Someone did claim, even though they're now dead, they claimed that Mothman was trying to steal their child, and they had to fight him off. Interesting. Now, I don't know if that's true, but... We don't know if any of it's true. Someone did say they fought the Mothman. Hmm. Well, keep your head on a swivel when you're out and about around Point Pleasant, especially the woods area, area wooded areas, the TNT areas, stuff like that. This is true for all survival scenarios, is um, have a route of escape for anything, even driving on the highway. You know, make sure you have an escape route. Um, the nearest shelter or defensible location, um, weapons. I mean, it's fight or flight, really. Like, if it's better to, fl to flee, then flee. If you have no choice to fight, you fight tooth and nail and stick and stone as hard as you can. Um, if it's the MIB, guys, compliance, baby. They're the government. Just kind of get your memory flashed and erased and that'll be fine. Um, or otherwise, get in a high-speed car chase and uh, yeah, you die mysteriously under strange circumstances. If it's the Grinning Man, avoid him entirely. 
We didn't get too much into the MIB or the Grinning Man. Uh, save those for future episodes. Season two's right around the corner, fellers. Um, we'll get into all that eventually. Someday, maybe, I don't know. Maybe when Jasmine takes over. Come to the Mothman Festival. It is a blast. It's fun. It's great. This year they did a big Fallout thing. Um, it was really popular. Uh, stay tuned for our Fallout episode. Wes, I'm sure you'll be a part of that. Unless there's football on. Plan better. Yeah. So, Wes, you got any final words for us? The man, the mop, the legend. That's it. Riveting. Jasmine, you got anything to plug? The question is, do you believe? Please let us know in the comments posted on our Facebook page. Brett's Facebook page. Let us know what you think about the Mothman. Hey, Jasmine, what's the name of that Facebook page? I don't know. Ah. They have to. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you're here for, Mr. Uh, Captain. I would like to plug my good best buddy, Taylor. Um, Hope you're doing great. We love you. We miss you. We're thinking about you, and we will have you back on as literally as soon as you are able. Um, check us out on all our socials on Facebook at Let's Die the Podcast. Let's Die exclamation point the podcast. Jasmine, check us out. Let me know what you, if you believe. If you believe, uh, Twitter at Let's Die Pod. Uh, email at let's die at let's die pod at gmail.com. Goodness gracious. And don't forget, if we're going to die, let's die together. Bye. Bye. Say bye, Wes. Sign off. Ah, you fucker. What's that, Jasmine? I got information on Mothman. On the Mothmans? Yeah. Is he your new boyfriend? Oh, yeah. Lovely. All right, computer set up. I forgot my beer. I'll be right back. Necessarily, because I'm leaving at eight fifteen, like I said. Yeah, that's fine. Leave when you gotta leave, Wes. Just uh, you know, don't just fucking hang up. Be like, bye. You know what I mean? Hopefully, I don't get a call. Yeah, it's fine. It'll it'll be fine. You pick football. Well, I don't have a choice, Wes. Everyone's been kind of busy lately, and episodes got to come out tomorrow. I'm hoping Taylor replies because Taylor. Because only a day away. I hope you know I recorded all of that. Well, did you? Oh yeah. (laughs) No, you just said you were recording, you big turd. Well, then I started recording right after that. It does not tell you when it records. That's so we can get fun bonus stuff for the end of the episode, like this.